we're gonna talk about global swatches. So, I am in the latest CC Illustrator. If you have not updated yet, um, you can always, or if you have updated, or whatever. I'm in this Workspace Essentials. The Essentials Classic Workspace has uh, all the tools and stuff up here at the top. The new Essentials Workspace has it all over here at the right. And it's got this Properties panel, which is gonna be showing us the stroke colors and the fill colors and everything. So we're gonna talk global swatches. Uh, I'm gonna create a shape with the rectangle tool. The shortcut for that is M. And if we just make a shape out here, it's gonna take whatever my fill and stroke color is currently, which over here on the left, you can see the fill and the stroke. It's so a white fill, black stroke, okay cool. Fill and stroke over here. So I'm going to change the stroke to none and I can do that just by selecting that one point and hitting zero. So now we have zero stroke essentially and we just have a filled shape. It's white so we can't see it. So let's change that color. We're gonna change it to, I don't know, I'm just gonna click on this red to start with but I'm gonna click on this new swatch button and that's gonna open up a new swatch panel. And I want this check mark here on global and that's what this tutorial is about global swatches so from there i can i can adjust the color uh we this is a really okay we'll make it orange i was gonna say that was a really brownish yucky color i'm not gonna add it to my library that can be a little bit of a hassle sometimes although adding it to your library can be good for working across multiple documents or multiple programs but Essentially, this is a global swatch, and what does that mean? That means that I can utilize this swatch in multiple instances, whether it's a fill, a stroke, a shape, text, anything. So we'll just put out a couple of a couple of objects here, so we can duplicate this rectangle. And instead of the fill, we're gonna go ahead and click on that and click the little slashy slash no fill. We're gonna add a stroke and just click the color here and we're gonna add that global swatch. You can see it here, it's global with a little white rectangle in the lower right hand corner. I'm gonna click on it and use that and we're gonna up the stroke so that we can actually see it to 10. All right, now that we have that, so we've got we've got some a guy here with a fill and a guy here with a stroke. Now if you were like, well why don't you just select them and change the colors, notice how that we have question marks, that's because these shapes are not the same, right? This one doesn't have a fill color, this one doesn't have a stroke color, so when you get multiple objects out there, it is uh, a little bit tougher to just select them and change their colors all at once. And let's throw another, another wrench into this. We're gonna add a little bit of text. We're gonna call this global. I'm gonna scale this up really quick by hitting the selection tool, grabbing the corner, holding shift, and scaling it up. All right, so we just got Myriad Pro, but we're gonna change the fill color on this guy to the same thing. So we have, we have a stroke, we have a fill, we have text, and we wanna change the colors of these different types of objects. Well, all we have to do is go up to Window, go down to Swatches. This would be my preferred method to get to my swatches. It's gonna pop up a little swatches uh, menu here. And I can scale that down so I can see everything. You know, this swatch, I can actually click and drag it around and move it if I wanted to uh, organize it in that way. But this guy here, if I just double click on him, it brings back up the swatch options and I can actually change that color. So if we wanted to go to a green color, we can do that. And what's cool and nifty is you have a little preview button down here, which means that if I che uh, check mark it, I can actually preview those changes on my document. So you notice that anything utilizing this global swatch is changing color as I change the color. That's pretty cool. So you can have multiple global swatches across your document whenever you're utilizing uh, similar colors. And in the end, if you wanna change those colors or if maybe you have a creative lead who's asking you, I wanna see that in blue instead of green or I wanna see that in pink you can change those really, really quickly and easily. So if you have a document where you haven't added global swatches, but you want to, here's a quick tip for you to select same fill colors and same stroke colors. So for instance, if we had, we had this rectangle, right? So if we were to duplicate him out, I'm just holding Option or Alt on a PC, and let's say we have a ton of different little uh, rectangles. Once I select one of them, if I go up to select same and go to stroke color, it's gonna select everything that has the same stroke color as the object I had selected. From there, 
you can go in and double click on that color and add that new global swatch just like you did before. And then what you can do is if you have the same color but it's fill colors, you can go select a shape that's got that fill color, that same fill color, go down, select same uh, fill color. So it's going to select everything that's got that same fill color and you can do the same thing. You can switch it now from this to whatever the global swatch is that you created. So if you need to backtrack and add global swatches to your document, that's how you do that. Anyway, that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more tips and tutorials and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.